Hello, everybody. It's Pastor Steve here. Here I am in my prayer room, and uh, it's the library in our home, and I'm hanging in my hammock. If this is your first week with us, wonderful. Welcome. It's amazing to see you. The whole idea behind this, these YouTube videos is to stir and inspire you with a passion to, to be excited and to love God, have prayer as a focus. We see Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Jesus got up well before light. Well, it's, it's quite dark at the moment out there. And um, he got up well before light, went to a secluded place to give himself to prayer. It says that in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And I want to encourage you that you can do the same. You may not have to get up this early <laughs> before light. But I want to encourage you, you can be excited about prayer. You can meet with the Father. You can give yourself over to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Why not? Why don't we just do that now? Everyone that's been watching for many, many weeks and to anyone who's new right now, I just welcome you to open up and, and just receive as I pray for you. Close your eyes and just, Holy Spirit right now, here we are to honour you, to give ourselves to you, to be led into a life of prayer by you. Holy Spirit, draw us to the Father. Help us to know Jesus better. Lord, help us to have an experience, encounters with you like none other. <laughs> Lord, we just, we just love coming to you in the morning, during the day, whenever it may be, to experience you. Like Moses at the burning bush. And Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Like Jesus getting up early. He was drawn out. He couldn't help himself. We just give ourselves to you right now and welcome you to fill us, refresh us, empower us, give us amazing time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I'm going to encourage you. We're going to have a great time today. Over the last few weeks, we have been talking about the Holy Spirit. We talked for three weeks about being baptized in the Holy Spirit, completely submerged and allowing that power to come all around our lives. Last week, we spoke a little bit about getting to know the Holy Spirit, understanding how he works with us and in us and through us. Jesus came, to, uh, sent the Holy Spirit and he, to convict the world of sin, righteousness and judgment. And uh, we've got to know the righteousness that's in us. And the Holy Spirit doesn't come to point out our failures. No. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to talk any more about that. Go and see last week's video. It's so exciting. This week, I want to talk a little bit about more foundations about knowing the Holy Spirit. And, hey, I have a, have a book that I've, I've written uh, many years ago. I wrote it was called The Overflowing of the Spirit. There's the other one that I have called Excited to Pray. And I want to encourage you today, we're going to be doing one chapter out of this book together. It might take us a, a couple of weeks to get through it, but I want to encourage you. That's what we're doing today. So uh, you can actually buy either of these online. And, and I want you to know today, I, I'm actually going to show you how you can get this uh, for free uh, by ebook. I actually have an ebook on on in, on, on uh, online at the moment that you can download for free, and you can uh, stop the video, download it, and then pick it back up again and and uh, take off with your copy with you on uh, ebook. So let's jump into this. And before we go into looking at, at uh, overflowing of the spirit and chapter three, we're going to have a look at the foundation of of what is the most important thing for a believer. Next steps. Where are we heading after receiving Christ? Well, let's have a look here and we see in Acts, we see that the, the we see in Acts chapter one, verse, uh, let me see, what do we got here? Verse four says, Jesus instructed them, the believers, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait here until you receive the gift I told you about the gift the father has promised. For John baptized you in water. But in a few days from now, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you know about this if you've watched the three-week series we did a, a few weeks ago. If you didn't, go back and have a look. It's, it starts four weeks ago and uh, four sessions ago, and uh, you'll get all the way through the baptism. But let's look to this next part. It says about in verse 8, but I promise you, they asked him, oh, when are you going to come, Jesus, and, and, and take your royal kingdom on earth? When are you going to take over from the Romans and, and lead your kingdom on earth? But that wasn't Jesus' plan. His plan was to follow God's will. And uh, we see here, but I promise you this, the Holy Spirit will come 
before he got to that, he said, you, you don't know times and seasons that the Father has set. And um, he, is, he has authority to know. And, and so for it's his authority. But I promise you this. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be filled with power. That word power there is the ability to do the miraculous, the ability to have supernatural favor, for doors to open, miracles to happen. When you find your destiny, your purpose and the plan God has for you, all of a sudden the, the way is open. The anointing comes, the power comes to bring favor with people, to bring resources into your life, to open up opportunities, to make a way where there was no way. And that's what this power is all about, us being witnesses. And you will be my messengers to Jerusalem, throughout Judea, the distant um, provinces, even to the remotest places on earth, places like Australia, places like England, places like Canada, <laughs> very remote compared to Israel. And so we look at that and we see God's plan was to baptize us in the Holy Spirit and he would come and we would be witnesses. There would be power that would come upon us and there is the foundation. We're going to talk about this for maybe a few weeks if we don't get through it all today. And uh, I'd like to jump into some notes that I took for you in, in this book, uh, Overflowing of the Spirit. Now, I took the notes and printed them off from chapter three. And by the way, when you get your ebook, feel free to print them off. They'll look exactly like this. These notes are, they'll come on a um, letter size page, but they'll be this size. And it's wonderful because you can read through them. And you can put notes on the side as you go. And I find buying ebooks or getting a free ebook like I'm giving you guys, uh, it's, it's an amazing thing to do. So, hey, I better tell you how to get this ebook so you can stop the video, download the ebook, and come back on and spend some time with us. Okay, so this is how you get this ebook. You're going to be able to download, look for that cover, but you go to os1.pastorsteve.com. CA. There it is there. You can download your free ebook. You'll also find out how to purchase the audio book version or the paperback version that I have. But I encourage you, if you're a subscriber on this channel, this is a, the, what I'm doing for you guys. Anybody who's watching my YouTube right now, you get a free ebook and it's exactly what I'm talking to you about now. So feel free to stop the video, download the ebook, and then start it back up again after you've printed chapter three off, and you can work along with me. Here we go. Well, hey, welcome back. <laughs> if you just got back online and you're, you've, you've printed off your version, here we go. The, you've got your page. If you didn't, you're still watching. That's okay. You can follow along with me. Let's enjoy this and see what's happening. So this is talking about be filled with the Spirit. We just saw in the, in the Bible just then, Jesus was giving his message to us saying, the Holy Spirit will come. You'll be filled. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I want to talk about some amazing things today. And uh, let's just jump into what it's going to be. The word there is be filled. The word filled is a compound, complex, um, you know, big word because it doesn't just mean, that, let's, let's look at what it means. It means to be continually filled. It means to let power come upon you. It's going to be a result. Be filled. The power will come with it, with the filling. And the more often we are filled, the greater we are expanded to receive more. So this word filled means a continual filling. It means a powerful filling. And it means the more we do it, the more robust and the larger we become to receive more. And so when I spend time in the mornings visiting with the Holy Spirit in prayer, in my prayer room, hanging in my hammock <laughs> and, um, and taking notes or reading in my journal, there it is there. And uh, as I do this, I am preparing myself to be larger on the inside, to receive more of his presence and anointing and revelation and power and favor and grace and all the good things he wants because we get enlarged and we can take in more. Let's jump into this and see how that happens. So we look at the first part. We see Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. This is where the word filled came from. 
And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation. That word dissipation means wasting away of our lives. If you have the notes, you can actually write that in. It means wasting away like a snail leaving a trail. But as a snail moves along, it wastes its life away as it travels along. It leaves its life behind. And so that's what dissipation means. It means being drained. Um, but be filled with the Spirit. That word filled there, let's, leave, let's look at what it means. Jack W. Hayford, an amazing doctor of, of liturgy and a pastor and a theologian, says this, the tense of the Greek or the, or the, uh, the tense or, the, or the, the, the persuasion of the Greek language for the word filled or the, the sense of the Greek for be filled makes clear that such a spirit-filled condition does not stop with a single experience, but is maintained by continually being filled as m commanded here. So when, when he studied that verse, he looked at the original langu language for be filled. And it literally means, those words be filled, means be filled now, tomorrow, the next day, but it's a commandment as well. It's not just a suggestion. It's a commanding tone saying, be filled. But it also means again and again and again and again. Now, 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 now. <laughs> every moment of every day, allow the filling process to fill you. So what does that mean? We can be filled at any moment of any time of any day. And so the reasoning here is the context there, yes, is, is wisdom. And if you look in the notes at the back of the book, it'll talk about the verses where. But this is, is, um, is, is, is more than earthly wisdom. It is the knowledge of God's heart. We're instructed to understand what, we'll, what, what, what the will of the Lord is. That's point number two in the, in the notes. You'll read it at the end of the book. The inference or the, or the meaning behind or the motivation is that we would understand what his will is. Moment. By moment. Hey, wouldn't you love to know what the Holy Spirit thinks about you right now, today, at this moment, this very moment? And you can. Why don't you just close your eyes and let's just pray and receive the filling of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we've learned about being baptized, being inundated, letting a wave come around us and soak us and fill us. We just welcome you right now to fill us with wisdom, understanding, insight. Holy Spirit, refresh our hearts. We are like sponges, ready again. Here we are being expanded because you're coming into us again and again and again. We're being filled with you again today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you. We, we, we just bless you. We glorify you. We, we think you're amazing. You're our greatest friend and companion. And guys, let's just keep going. The inference or the meaning is so that we get the wisdom Moment by moment. Now you can talk to him. He can start to lead you. Uh, this means to walk in continual fellowship. Remember, this word filled is not just one time. It's a continual filling again and again so that we can walk in continual fellowship with him. And so there's many times we stop and start in our relationships with people and God. <laughs> many times we leave God on the shelf like those books up there. And uh, God wants us to keep the book open. He wants us to stay in fellowship. He wants us to stay connected. And so um, a continual filling with the Holy Spirit helps us to stay close to God's heart and to constantly understand his will. And so God wants us to understand his will moment by moment. Now, does that mean I'm going to sit in my hammock all day long and just keep a book open and wait on the Holy Spirit? Of course not. <laughs> I set aside time in my day to come and spend with God so I can be like a sponge and I can just soak up his presence. Just like we prayed earlier, we just prayed for Holy Spirit to come and soak us and fill us and refresh us. And if you didn't get enough, just rewind the video and start it again at that prayer and get more and then stop and go back and get more and then stop and go back and get more. And so you can fill the sponge up as much as you want. Expand yourself so you can receive more power, more grace, favor, anointing, everything God has for you. And so he doesn't expect us to stay in our prayer room 
all day long. I, I would get bored. <laughs> well, not in his presence, of course. But, you know, it, I've got things to do. I've got a calling and a purpose and a destiny. And, and it said in that, that Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we'd be given power to be witnesses, to go out into the world and reach people. And so we'd be, how would we reach? By being successful, by advancing, by moving forward, by having a great life, the outpouring coming on us. And so let's keep going. We need to continually drink of the Holy Spirit and develop a craving for him. And so this leads into the next section. I was just going to give you a little testimony about my life. I used to be a rugby player in Australia, and I'd still play rugby if I had time. I love the sport. It's amazing. And, um, and so, but back then, uh, before I was a believer, a lot of times I would get, get, get very drunk after a game, and I'd, I'd drink a lot of alcohol. And as you can tell, I'm not a massive big guy. I'm only five foot six. And, uh, you know, I was probably 180 pounds at the, at the time, and so I wasn't a massive guy. And so the alcohol would really affect me. And I used to get drunk very quickly. And so what, what, uh, I would come under the influence. I would be, um, you know, uh, and so I would be, you know, a, a lot of times I would get um, inebriated. <laughs> the word is inebriated. I was trying to find the word there. And, um, but, you know, when I very first started, I was a young person. I started drinking alcohol when I was only about, I don't know, 15, 16. And I remember I started uh, uh, beer. When I drank beer, I did not like the taste. It just tastes terrible. But I remember I, I wanted to sort of keep up with my friends and all that sort of thing. So I would, I, you know, I just kept drinking it until I could get a taste for it. Eventually, I got a taste for it. Eventually, it, you know, but then I, I started to like the influence of it and all that sort of thing. And I eventually got addicted to alcohol after a few years. You know, it took about seven, eight, nine years. And, and uh, I was well on the way to becoming an alcoholic. <laughs> and... Uh, but the process was this, that I, I had to get a taste for that. And when we go back to the original verse, it says here, you know, by the way, I, I don't drink alcohol anymore. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not trying to be, you know, be a proud person saying I don't or anything. No, no. But I just don't feel for me it's something that I do uh, as a leader or even in my life. It's just my personal choice not to drink anymore. And uh, for me, I personally am happy that I don't, I'm not addicted to that anymore. I'm not, I don't need it anymore. I'm, I, you know, I've, so now we can get into this. It says, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. The context here has something to do about being filled, but that's joined to this thing. What is it to be a, a, a attracted or connected or addicted? And it says, we need to continually drink of the Holy Spirit and develop a craving for him. This is how we get addicted to his presence. And it's very similar to the way I was when I first started drinking beer. I, it was foreign to me. I didn't even like it. And I didn't, you know, and a lot of times we don't realize, but the Holy Spirit seems foreign to us. But as we take time in his presence and we just soak and rest and wait and allow him to start to move on our lives, and we start to drink and, 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 in, and enjoy. how do I drink? Well, you worship, you read the word, you start to soak. You, you know, I, I, I do many things to, to talk to the Holy Spirit, meditate on verses and then open up my heart and pray and receive however you do. But we look at this. We need a continual drink filled continually. And so we get this drink of the Holy Spirit and it develops a craving and that's what we want to have, a craving. And eventually we want to become addicted to the presence of the Holy Spirit. See, the moment you're addicted to the presence of the Holy Spirit, you want to pray. You are just drawn. You desire to pray. You love being in his presence. Prayer is not difficult. Prayer is not a hard thing. It's, it's, it's not something you do. It's something that comes out of you. And uh, so that's that's where we're headed as as people. So I'm just going to go to the next page and uh, keep going. So wine produces mockers, liquor, liquor leads to brawls. Whoever is led astray or intoxicated by drink cannot, cannot be wise. Wise there is talking about being led by the revelation of God's wisdom. And so, but it, the word intoxicated there, because we are relating to this verse, which is, which is basically comparing the gift of the Holy Spirit to being intoxicated or inebriated or, you know, uh, uh, drawn to the Holy Spirit. 
We need to know what the word intoxicated means. I want to be addicted to the Holy Spirit. I want, I, I, in some ways, like figuratively speaking, okay, figuratively speaking, I want to be intoxicated by his presence. It's like when I come into my wife's presence, I mean, I'm intoxicated by her presence. <laughs> Looking at her, being around her, her personality, uh, hugging her, you know, being with her. I just, it, it's intoxicating. The one you love, the one you're close to. And so that's what I want for the Holy Spirit. And I don't want you to have that relationship with him as well. So let's what the, see what the word intoxicated means. So intoxicated, in the original Greek word there, is to waver and wander astray into error, transgression, and misdirection, to reel as if intoxicated after drinking wine. So in some way, it's coming under the influence of or being so influenced that you're moving away from, from wisdom or you're moving into, into wandering astray. But when we are intoxicated by the Holy Spirit, it's a totally different thing. We're wandering away. We come under under his influence and we're intoxicated by his presence, his love. We are drawn into our intimacy with God. We wander and waver away from the things of the world and we wander and waver into wisdom, into favor, into grace, into blessings. And we see in Galatians 5, 16 and 17, I've talked about this many times, as you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. For your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit and hinder him from living free within you. And the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your old self-life from dominating you. What are some of the things that dominate you? Small-mindedness, small thinking, fear, guilt, shame, a lot of other other things, stress, pressure, and all of these things hinder the Holy Spirit from moving in us. But the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder our old self-life from dominating us. The Holy Spirit's cravings push those things away. And we're no longer dominated. We are wandering and wavering, intoxicated by good, intoxicated by his love, by his presence, drawn into God, drawn into his favor and grace and mercy. And I want to encourage you, the more you get into God's presence, the more this becomes easy and instantaneous and and you can enjoy the process. So I welcome you to take time to start to establish this environment around your life where you become a sponge to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Go back over these videos and watch them again and pray through the prayers. Hey, why don't we just pray again one more time and just, Holy Spirit, just close your eyes. Holy Spirit, we are that sponge. We welcome you to come and intoxicate us with your presence. We welcome your intense cravings to come around our life, your intense cravings of joy, peace, favor, love, mercy, grace, joy, peace, all these wonderful kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, these wonderful things to come around and overtake our lives. Your goodness, Holy Spirit, to lead us into so many more wonderful things. We're going to have a great day today just because we've met with you and opened up to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. More of you. Just see yourself as SpongeBob, (laughs) Sponge Steve, Sponge whoever you are. Be a sponge to draw on this intoxicating presence of the Holy Spirit. He is a person. He is a spirit. He is joy. Do you know fear is a spirit? And we also have Holy Spirit who brings peace, joy, favor, grace, love, mercy. And we can be intoxicated by all those rich, beautiful treasures from heaven. And because we are led by those things and wisdom and revelation fills our hearts, We are wandering and wavering away from the world. See, the Holy Spirit helps us where we can't help ourselves, where we've been drawn into things. He cuts off that and leads us the other way into freedom and and deliverance and joy and success and promotion and abundance and so many things. You know, if you run a business, if you own a a company, if you're working for a boss, if you are are in a ministry, if you're a mom or a dad or a a, a family member or a student at school or going to college, you need the anointing, the presence, the refreshing flood of the Spirit of God every day. 
Why? So that you can wander and waver away from the things that lead you to destruction. Like a snail wasting away, we go in the opposite direction. We move into that life that brings us upward and onward. And and instead of wasting away, our movements bring us into greater refreshing, greater joy, greater, greater significance. And it's an amazing life to be intoxicated by the Holy Spirit. And so, hey, isn't it wonderful to sit with an author of a book when you get to read the book, but you get to hear the message behind the message? Of the book. So let's continue. And we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit in such a way that we are intoxicated. We are to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You know, a, a drunkard has chosen to remain under the influence of alcohol. The Christians are to choose to come under the influence of the Holy Ghost, moment by moment, to be led by the Spirit. Moment by moment means, you know, in the morning, if I spend my time with the Holy Spirit and soak and I expand that sponge and he fills me up, I've got something to run on that day. I've got some refreshing to last me during the day. And then at night, I might spend some more time or the next morning I get up again and I get refreshed and filled again so I I can be led by the Spirit during the day. Do you know the Holy Spirit is the most important person, the most important step? This is a great foundation. I just started talking about it. Why would Jesus say, <laughs> wait for the Holy Spirit? You're going to go, do you know those disciples changed their whole world, their then known world, because they were filled with the Holy Spirit? How much more? Hey, we better keep going with this. I want to get this part finished today. And so our Father in heaven wants us to know his heart. Communion with the Holy Spirit or being filled and saturated with the Holy Spirit saturates our lives with the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God's heart. And if you're not sure about that, I want you to go back and and have a look at the, the context there that I talked about. You go into the notes of the book. I actually printed them off here. If you have a look at the notes, uh, there's a notes section at the end of the chapters. And it talks about there, um, you'll see... It says there, we're looking at the context here, understand what the will of the Lord is. And we look at number two, we're in chapter three, number two. You go to Ephesians chapter five, verse 17, 5, 15, all the way through to 17. If you read those verses, you'll see the context of this one verse, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the context is being filled with God's wisdom, the whole context. And so we want to be filled with God's wisdom. Here we are right here talking about God's wisdom because Communion with the Holy Spirit saturates our lives with the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God's heart. The moment you know God's heart, you're led into his purposes, into the broadness of the life that he has for you. When you know God's heart, you're not trying to second guess his thoughts because his heart leads you in all the breadth of his thinking. And the moment you can be in tune with his heart, you never struggle with the fact of, does God love me? Does God think that I'm amazing? Does he really think I'm righteous because of Jesus' blood? Absolutely. He sent his son to die for us on the cross. The wisdom of the ages was to send the one he loved to die for the humans. The greatest wisdom was to let his own son die on the cross so that we could be born again that we can be a new creature on the inside so that we could be in tune with the Father. We can receive the filling daily of the Holy Spirit. And now we can know the Father's heart and we can be led in his thinking and revelation and we can be in tune with him again as the Holy Spirit intoxicates us and leads us in in the word of God, in the revelation, the will of God, knowing God's heart. So being intoxicated with the Spirit allows us to waver and wander away from the ways of this world and into the ways of God. You literally walk into the middle of God's will without even realizing it. I just love it that I don't have to find the way myself. The Holy Spirit comes and he moves us from the inside out, the moves the circumstances of the day to doors to open up for me, moves my heart to take me in that direction, to be in the right place at the right time for God encounters. What an amazing thing. So we look at this, almost finished. 
It is not enough to experience the filling of the Holy Spirit once and leave it at that. Many times Christians get a taste of the Holy Spirit and forget that is a continual experience. Others come and they, you know, for more, but they only sip him in, just a little drink. But, you know, the the, the sipping saints, (laughs) he wants us to guzzle, lap, soak, bathe, drench and marinate in his presence. That's what I talked about for, for three weeks when we talked about baptism in the Holy Spirit. Be filled, be soaked, be baptized, be inundated, submerged in his presence. Oh, my. Inside and out. And then he wants us to guzzle, lap, soak, and all these things, marinate in his presence. God wants us to get drunk in the Holy Ghost again and again and again. When the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost, it was not a trickle. And tomorrow, the next day, or whenever you see the next video, I think it's going to be next week, I'm going to be talking about the power of the Holy Spirit, the reason the Holy Spirit came on us. And remember at the very beginning, I talked about the fact that this word be filled with the Spirit meant continually filled. We've just touched on that today again and again and again. We talked about coming under the, the, the influence. And next week, we're going to talk about the power that is the result of it and how amazing it changes lives and the future. So I want to encourage you to come along. I want you to download that book, the free ebook. Go and go and find it on cs one pastorsteveca Get your free ebook. And also find out how to purchase these online as well. Whatever you want to do that way. But hey, let's pray and let's have an amazing day. God bless you. Holy Spirit, we've already learned that we can be intoxicated by you. Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation or wasting away of our life. But be filled. Be being filled again and again and again and again. We draw on you again. That's three times this prayer meeting, God. Three times on this video. We draw again as sponges. Here we are, and it's our third time, so we're receiving even more this time. We feel you even stronger right now, Holy Spirit. We welcome you to soak us, refresh us, fill us. We are sponges, intoxicate us. Help us to wander and waver away from things of this world and supernaturally guide us into perfect encounters. God of appointed destinations this day. Open doors of opportunity. Give us miracles. Lead us into wisdom. Help us to know your heart, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. If you've been enjoying these videos, I welcome you to give them a thumbs up. (laughs) Share them with your friends online. I really encourage you to do that. Find some Christian friends that that are dry or need need some soaking with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Send them on there and say, hey, we've got an amazing pastor that's going to talk to you about these cool things. And uh, also, if you haven't yet, subscribe and uh, join this movement. Imagine if every Christian on the planet Earth had intimate personal time with God every day and got filled with the Holy Spirit and went out into the world next week. Wait till you hear about this power. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye for now.